City. Hola, 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 love for class of 2020, and welcome to Ikele Zanati right here on SABC One Mzanti for sure. Lena I refer to as the Prima Series. Ika mausia nela zutaba at imca underscore g across all social media pages. I to do the best, and I shall do the rest. Number fifteen in the Prima Series. Kala ge mumshaga six wa January sasa vanani all the way till the seventeenth of January 2020. Number fifteen tiki niku muzuta ma Prima Series. I refer to sin letter la wana kolenzo wa zogut kasi asenga expectani kunyaga wa 2020. In your academics, when it comes to um, my assignments, um, my tests, um, my exams, and jalo and jalo, we are making sure that you're in the loop so that when you walk into that exam room, when you walk into that classroom, you're already prepared for what's to come. Otherwise, what are some of your academic goals for this year? Hit us up on the social media streets on Facebook or simply Kelezanati on Twitter, GN underscore SABC1. And for all the behind the scenes exclusive stuff, you can catch us on Instagram or simply Kelezanati underscore SABC1. On the Mkanjaba Fair, we're all about a Counting and I'm having a drunken petter or Nelson put on a camera on Johnny. I am Pirin Janotem. I am Gabila put on a sauce for no words. What's got to Nelson the Buya Gapi? What are you all about? And I'm trying to on the show what can we expect? Yes, San Bonani Makaya, Lono Nelson, Zoving 94, our accounting session, Lana, Ukeleza Nati. Well, today's show is over a gem packed, is over a Kalongo jam. Well, we'll be focusing on gap principles, we'll be fo uh, focusing on um, financial statements in a corner, yeah. getting into depth and understanding goody. how can you interpret these statements. Mm. Absolutely right. I'm so looking forward to that one. But fair to Oh come on, just put on my side dollar. Got a message boy dollars. Can I shake when I'll be accounting? Do not move a muscle. Oh, there you have it, Mzanti says, Buyile. You are still watching Ikele Zanati, the Prime series, right here on SABC One Mzanti for sure. Now, but it is a new year, and uh, you know, you're in the trick now. Mfunuwa is good for this year, Uzumisele Ngani. What are some of your academic goals for 2020? Hit us up on the social media streets on Facebook, or simply Ikele Zanati on Twitter, GN underscore SABC One. So, you can have a 40 buffet on the Instagram streets, or simply Ikele Zanati underscore SABC One. Right now, though, so can I go back to Gundaba here accounting? Nelson? Shall we? Well, Ngabonga see I'm fair to today's show in Jungbang Shilo is over a Kalengo Jam. And now I'd like to just give you an overview of what this year holds for you. Mm. Right? So we are the well as we have four terms, but Generally, when you're in metric, you have three terms. Yeah. And glama term lawa, I just want to give you what you lento or mele uipege what you will be doing, mm. right? So for term one, yes, obviously you'll be having contact time no teacher wako, mm -hmm. where you will be focusing much on the company concepts, nama general ledgers, well Emma Kaya Bawazi Abanyi as uh, the T accounts. Yeah. Now corner you'll be focusing more in depth. Uh, guma company financial statements and mm -hmm. also the interpretations as well as ama audit reports okay. right and then obviously after utisha akleta ugunipa ugudla gwe ni wamele ante with insuti na well you'll be tested on a control test your color as well as a case study a auto and then that will be it for utemi kala mm -hmm. the second term will then have only about four topics yeah the fixed assets, the reconciliation, inventory, NEVET, mm. and then you'll be having your exams. Yes. You'll also have contact time, no teacher got to at this time around, it's minimal. Mm. You are supposed to prepare for your exams. Or yeah. June. Yeah. And then you have your project, which is your assignment. Then also uh, your midterm paper will be divided into two, on a paper one and paper two, yeah. of which Gumna and Dimanja. Mm. Right. And then we go to third term, Lanas Ngashuguti, Ilas Biako Naputuam, because yeah. you're supposed to actually have covered most of the topics. And Nako Makaya, you need to know, Guti, term three, you're only focusing on possibly two topics, mm. right? Most of the time, you're doing revision or Tisha Wako. Mm -hmm. This term, you'll be focusing on manufacturing as well as, as AMA budgets. Okay. You'll write a test. Mm -hmm. You'll be given a case study as well as AMA prelims Wako. Gushube, mm. Gushube Makshuba. Well, and then fourth term, that's when you'll be writing your final exams. Yes. And you need to be prepared by then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, preparation starts right now. Yeah, bo. Mm -hmm. Okay, ask us to get the fundo. All right, so uh, I just wanted to show you with this term around. It's, it's, it's quite simple. Your first term was a focus to 
what we call EP power. Yeah. Right? And then people are near to it will focus on the things that you've done first term, which is company concepts, ledger accounts, mm -hmm. uh financial statements of which was a focus on income statement, balance sheet and cash flow, as well as interpretation of my company statements. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Now corner you will then also focus on audit reports. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then when we move on to our second term, this is where you'll focus on paper two mm. mostly, okay. but also in paper one, right? Yeah. You'll be focusing on fixed assets. Mm. This is where you get to learn more about the depreciation, inventory systems, mm -hmm. um, which is paper two, mm -hmm. right? Reconciliations, which are also part of the paper two yako, as well as event. Yes. Now, moving right along without wasting time, was there with that term yako, mm -hmm. where your term is short. Your term, you just have to do only two topics, which is manufacturing, which is part of paper two, mm -hmm. as well as armor budgets, which is part of paper two. Then, for term, you will then have to just revise and prepare for your final examination. Mm. Yeah. So, ngatanda ugutingin fage guyo e topic eto kala of features gap principles, right? So, gap principles swainze gakulu. We've started gap principles from grade 10, yeah. right? Up until my metric. Mm. So, nzo velengie guo without wasting any time because sure. yeah. So, the first principle is focus on your learner. It's what we call materiality principle, right? Mm. So, this, this principle is quite simple. Yeah. It's quite simple because it tells you that all information that is material or important, right? Guamele yeah. e record separately. I'll give you an example. Sure. So, now, we know it is number fixed assets in a company. Yeah. Those fixed assets, you cannot record them in a collective sense. Guamele mm. was separate. Right, you will have an account for your land and building, you will have an, your account for um, your vehicle and equipment. Mm. But then it also states that whatever that is not immaterial, mm -hmm. you, are, you understand, in the yeah. in, in core important, in other words, yeah. it doesn't have any significance. Mm. Um, you can then add those things as far as pens, pencils, yeah. rubber, you understand. Yeah. You can add them and then record them uh account stationary when you're preparing your financial statements Got you. so now moving on to the second one which is a uh, historical cost concept right so the historical cost concept now it's quite simple because this principle mm. right tells you uguti okay so you have an asset let's say sia ltd today decides to buy a vehicle right mm. so when you buy this vehicle it, let's say it, it costs you three hundred and fifty thousand. yeah so uh after you have bought this vehicle for three years, it loses value, right? Mm -hmm. When it loses value, in Martin Zako, you are supposed, or rather you are expected to write the original cost price of that vehicle. Yes. Because let's say now you want to sell that vehicle, mm -hmm. right? When you want to sell it, the, the, the way I do my depreciation might differ from the way you will calculate yes. yours. Meaning that you cannot write the carrying value of that amount as uh, the cost amount of the vehicle. Mm. So you're supposed to write the original one so that when someone wants to buy it, you can both have the same amount and start from calculating your depreciation to get your carrying value. You understand? Then yes. you can agree on that. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to the third one, which is business entity principle. So we know that a business is an entity. Mm. We take it as a separate individual, yes. right? So this principle basically tells you, Uti, the financial accounts the, or the accounting uh, books of the business and the accounting books of the owner mm -hmm. need to be separated. Uh, you understand? Yeah. Because now as a business, you cannot cover the debts of, uh, of your owner because these two are separate entities. Yes. We are told us. Yeah. yeah. So as it says, Lana, the accounting records of the business must be kept separate from the accounting records of the owner. Mm. Okay. So... Just to move on, or rather, let me just give another example so that I understand. So, let's say you own, and yeah. then I decide to go and buy a car on credit. Okay. If my financial books are linked to the business, it means the business now, your ecology, let's say, whatever car brand you buy, they will, they will be indebted to actually repay that amount. Yes. All right. So, moving on to this, this, this concept is quite interesting over mm. its prudence. You understand? Mm. When I say prudence, someone might think, oh, Nelson's <laughs> often a cool man when you're prudence. Give but, man prudence. Yeah, give man <laughs> prudence, exactly. Yeah. So prudence principle or rather concept uh, tells us that whenever we are recording or preparing our financial uh, statements, we need to prepare them in a, set, in, in a way that it is conservative. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Meaning that 
you cannot overstate your profits mm -hmm. and understate your expenses. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So, uh, I'll give you an example. Let's say now you're a business and you're doing your bank reconciliations, mm. right? And then you get to notice, oh, our cash here, about 40,000 mm. from the business account. Mm. You understand? And that person is nowhere to be found. Yeah. So, prudence principle then allows us to be able to write off that 40,000. Because remember, it says we are supposed to not overstate our profits mm -hmm. or our income, mm -hmm. and we are not supposed to understate our expenses or loss. You understand, sir? Yes. Yes. Nani Makaya, I hope this helps you. All right. So, Sna Moshiskati, let's move on. We are going to uh, focus on e going consent principle. So, the going consent principle then states that you are supposed to prepare your financial books in a way that you are assuming that the entity will continue to operate, you understand, mm. in a foreseeable future. Mm. So all the time when you prepare your financial statements, you need to then think and say, okay, but we, we have to then assume Ruti, the business will continue functioning. Yes. You understand? So that's what Going Concern says. All right. And then the last principle under mm -hmm. GAP is that um, we need to focus on matching principle. Yeah. Matching principle is also quite understandable because people would think ama gap principles are difficult yes. so now what it says is for every expense incurred mm -hmm. right for every expense incurred right to produce an income mm -hmm. these two amounts need to be matched against each other in our in the same um, financial statements yeah. meaning Uguti, you cannot Right, record these amounts mm -hmm. on the day. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can not um, record these two accounts separately. Yes. You understand? Yeah. You need to record them in the same financial statement. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because one made the other. So that's how we need to understand it. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's it for okay. our gap principle. So some people also ask, mm -hmm. just to wrap, some people also ask. You understand what does gap stand for it stands for generally accepted accounting principles yes this is a universal language that businesses use to actually understand how they need to prepare their financial state mm. like i gave you an example the other day here mm. let's say you're an investor from china mm -hmm. and then you are supposed to you or you rather you want to invest in a business in south africa mm. if they use a different language mm -hmm. of recording accounting language yeah. then it would be difficult for you to invest in that business I see. yeah wow. so that's that's care all right cool stuff uh, thank, thank you, you so sir. much uh, nelson for that okay let's start what you are saying on the social media streets and hi guys i aim to increase my marks this year i need two distinctions nice one and i have already created a study program for myself i like that my favorite so two distinctions how about more? How about more? Keep watching Kelezo Nati, everybody, to Friday, 5 to 6 a.m. on SABC1 on UBA. Okay. I'm going to just put some aside. The best way to do it is to do accounting. Do not move a muscle. When it comes to entertainment, I'm talking entertainment and of course education. This is Geleza Nati, the primary revision series right here on SABC One. Now Linda Baba Fetu, Sikalungum Shaga Six, Sazo Banani, all the way till the 17th of Jan 2020. Giving you the lowdown of what you can expect this year and just laying the foundation as you begin the year or 2020 in your matric year. Okay, man, just wheel it back to some accounting. Nelson, take it away. Yeah, well, now we are going to focus on uh, the financial statements. Okay. What are, we are not focusing on the three of them. We're just going to focus on income statement and balance sheet. All right. So we've been doing financial statements from um, grade 10, yep. right? Grade 10, you are doing financial statements for a sole trader, uh -huh. right? Financial statements for a sole trader. Grade 11, you are focusing on partnership. And then now you are focusing on financial statements of a company. You understand so from here i just want to go to the formats right because most of 
us, we struggle with um, writing down our formats for these financial statements. So I'll just uh, show you how they are and also explain in depth what is it that is expected from you, especially when you are doing these financial statements. Yeah. So the first one is what we call a balance sheet. So they don't know the purpose of uh, a balance sheet. Well, a balance sheet, it's a, a tool rather that uh, indicates the financial position of the business, right? And then this is where you get to see, Uguti, you have, um, you know, categories rather. Let me say that. Yeah. Categories, right? And then uh, you'll also have um, breakdowns within. So the first thing that you need to focus on when you are writing your balance sheet is assets. So what are assets? Assets are the belongings of the business, what mm -hmm. the business owns. So these assets are divided into two, yeah. right? You have your non-current assets and you have your current assets. Mm. So for you to understand the difference between these two, you are supposed to understand between non-current assets. Mm -hmm. These are assets that you cannot sell on an everyday basis for profit, yeah. right? These are assets that you need in order for you to operate as a business, mm. you understand? And then under non-current assets, we have our finan uh, financial assets, yep. and we also have our tangible fixed assets, yep. you understand? So tangible or rather fixed means you can touch them, you can see them. Mm. All right, so uh, the, 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 uh, the fixed assets, they form our note number three. Mm right and then you go to your current assets so current assets these are assets that you know they bring in inflow they they are, are, are used to make profit mm -hmm. you understand so there you have your inventories mm -hmm. your inventories can be your trading stock okay. right i'll just say trading stock and then also your uh, consumables on hand you understand and then also you have your trade and other receivables so this is the money that you get from um your debtors yeah. you understand and then you have your cash and cash equivalents so all of these three things they then add up to what we call our current assets yeah. all right and then after you've prepared this you need to then add i'll just say um our non-current is one mm -hmm. and then our uh, current assets will be two right when you add one and two, you then get what we call your total assets. Okay. And then from there, you move on to the second portion of your um, balance sheet, yeah. Emakaya, you understand? Uh, this is where you focus on equity as well as your liabilities. So your equity, this is where you focus on uh, shares, you focus on um, capital and uh, revenues and you, you understand? You yeah. focus on all these things, mm -hmm. right? And then there are two also uh, uh, separate liabilities. Yeah. You have your non-current liabilities mm -hmm. and you have your current liabilities. Your non-current liabilities, we take this as the long-term liabilities, such as mortgage bonds, such as your long-term uh, long loan. Mm -hmm. And then also you have your current liabilities. So current liabilities, you need to focus or rather understand them as if they are your short-term liabilities, yeah. things that you can pay within a period of 12 months, mm. basically. Yes, so this is where you have your trade and other payables. So between uh, your current assets and your current liabilities, you can see there that you have, for your current assets, you have your trade and other receivables, and then for your current liabilities, you have trade and other payables, things that you, you pay. Yeah. Trade and other payables, this is where you include your creditors, you understand, mm -hmm. such things. Uh, and also, you have what we call uh, your bank overdraft, yeah. right? And then, I just want to show you something. When you take your total assets, right, and you take your uh, total equity and liabilities, yeah. they always need to be equal. So, uh, this column here, needs to be equal to this column here. Well, just to give you a, a secret, it's, it's just three marks. If you have this one and this one the same, you are guaranteed a mark. Mm. But nonetheless, let's not focus on extra <laughs> things there. Let's focus on this financial statement uh, and understand it. So everything, you need to take it as it is. So 
a balance sheet it's nice because it is made out of um notes yeah you understand you have your note number three note number four five six seven eight and nine yeah so if you understand your notes then you can understand your balance sheet and yeah. then you can be able to see the financial a position of the business yeah. you understand mm -hmm. and yeah so most people struggle mm -hmm. to understand we would see okay so fixed asset what are these fixed asset we are speaking of land and building vehicles equipment yes. you understand and they even say tangible something that you can touch mm -hmm. but remember you do not sell them for what for profit on an everyday basis you need them for you to operate as a yeah. business Yes, and then moving on to our income statement. So our income statement, it looks like this, right? So I'll just be quick on this one. Remember, when you start with your income statement, you are supposed to know your turnover, also known as sales. And then from your sales, you need to minus what we call a uh, debtors, debtors, allowances, right? So what are debtors allowances? Remember, let's say someone buys a book from your store and then it's missing pages and then they bring it back mm -hmm. and then you accept it. Those are debtors allowances. Mm -hmm. And then you, after taking your uh, debtors allowances away from your sales, then what you need to also take out is your uh, cost of sales, yeah. right? Your cost of sales there. You need to take the value of your sales less the value of your cost sales then you get what we call gross profit you get this here right after getting your gross profit you then need to look at other operating income yeah. so other operating incomes are other means of how you make income mm -hmm. right so you then do what you also add up your operating income and get the total of other operating income which is this amount here yeah. and then what you do after that you're supposed to add these two right mm -hmm. you add your gross profit and other operating income to get what we call gross operating income yeah. from there then you can move on to your expenses your operating expenses so these are the expenses of the business yeah. you understand mm -hmm. and what's quite interesting this year with your operating expenses is that there are certain uh, 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 accounts that are added such as depreciation mm. before we use not to actually write depreciation under our operating expenses but now you can actually do your uh, depreciation your trading stock deficit salaries and wages consumable stores mm. as well as sundry expenses yeah. all right and then after you've actually added up these accounts you'll get your operating expenses mm -hmm. then this is where the trick comes in because most of our learners at home they add they add operating in um, sorry they add gross operating income with our operating expenses no remember expenses is more like money that is going out of the business yeah. so what you need to do is to take your operating income less your operating expenses yeah. so that you can get what we call your operating profit mm. You understand yeah. remember when you're calculating profit you take out uh, expenses from your income and see what is it that you left with all right without wasting any time let me just carry on and then from there when you have your operating profit you then need to also do what we call interest income right mm -hmm. interest income is known as note number one which is important mm -hmm. all right so most of this information you need to understand your adjustments. You need to know your adjustments, prepare your adjustments. We have all. And then, all right. And then from there, you have a profit before interest expense. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, this is different from uh, grade 10 and 11. Because now, when you are in metric, this is how it will look like. Right? You'll have uh, new things that will be added such as profit before income tax as well as income tax but your income tax you need to actually minus it from your profit before income tax yeah. so that you can get net profit for the year this is net net profit so it means after doing this this will be your profit for the year hmm. 
All right. Got you. Wow, nice one. Hey, <laughs> Nelson is definitely on a roll for Nakba Fetu. Because I was like, I'm going to go away. Now, call you out this year. It's Ama Biang. While you let us know on the socials, we'll quickly go for a quick commercial break. Where's this boy? I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going And this is the primary revision series. Call a like I who is ABC One Mzanti for sure. You are looking for a way to actually better your studying. What if not? ESABC Virtual Academy is here to make sure that you have a brilliant 2020 and a brilliant metric year. Anga kulunga kulu for more info. Agu pegela. Chomi, why are you so stressed? Metric Chomi, I am stressed. Hi, Wena. We haven't heard about Siva. Siva. What's this? Okay, let me show you. SABC Education Virtual Academy is your metric support one-stop shop. SIVA offers complete metric support in mathematics, physical sciences, life sciences, accounting, and English first additional language. You have full access to video lessons. Register on www.siva.co.za. Go SIVA. Go SIVA. Oh, there you go, class of 2020. The website to visit is simply www.siva.co.za. When it comes to your academics, and of course, my lessons are like how quick it is. Right now, though, let's continue your show with some accounting. Nelson, over to you. All right, so, Jacob and Shil, the show is full of gem, each gem, each alone. Yeah. So now we we're going to analysis and interpretation of financial statements and notes. Yeah. Right. Remember, when you prepare your financial statements, you need to also analyze and interpret them. Mm. Right, to see and also notice which is your business profitable. Yeah. Are we making are we making profit? Mm. Right. Remember, the main aim of the business is to make profit. Yeah. So now, um on this topic rather, grade eleven, we're focusing on average creditors payment period. Uh, we were focusing on debt equity ratios, we are focusing on partners earring, uh, return on partners equity. But this year it's galo. Yeah. This year it's nice, you have different things because now we are focusing on shareholders mm -hmm. right remember now companies they sell shares they they need to understand how much is it that they're going to return to their uh, shareholders yes all right so for our session though i'm going to focus on um six of them okay right just to give you a, a, a clear understanding of them mm -hmm. so the first one we know it as a, a current ratio yeah so this will be our number one right so a current ratio mm. right uh, it tells us more about how the business is performing does the business have uh, actually enough assets to cover its short-term liabilities yeah. you understand mm -hmm. what you do here is you are supposed to take your current assets mm -hmm. so remember when we were doing a balance sheet and then I showed you which we have non-current assets and current assets. So now, the same way where we, in which you actually add up your current assets, this is how you're going to get it, right? After getting it, you need to then divide it, mm -hmm. you understand, uh, with current liabilities. Mm -hmm. So usually, the norm that is expected here is 2 is to 1. But let's say now you have a norm that's 3 is to 1. Right. Let me first explain this. Yeah. So when it's two is to one, it means you have two assets to cover one liability. You understand? So now, if it's three into one, it means that the business has assets and also it has investments. You understand? Which means when you have investments, possibly you'll be able to cover your short-term debts. Mm. You understand? And then moving on to the second one, which we know it as asset test ratio. Yeah. So the asset test ratio also tells us the same thing, mm. right? That is the business able to cover its short-term liabilities. Yeah. But now the difference between the two is that now we are taking out our inventory. Mm. You understand? So you'll see current assets minus your inventory into your current liabilities. Yeah. All right. So now with this one, what is expected is that one is supposed to be one yeah. right to show that okay for for every asset we can cover a liability mm. so as you can see here uh theirs is 2.4 is to one meaning that the business is in good uh, terms they can yeah. cover their short term liabilities so these two they cover 
the short uh, term liabilities right liabilities okay liabilities all right so they fall under what we call liquidity these are liquidity ratios all right and then we go to uh, our cost of sales over average trading stock so what do we call this we call this stock holding period yeah this tells you or rather it becomes an indicator mm -hmm. of how okay how many days right you are going to hold certain stock yeah. or rather have in your business mm -hmm. yes so that's what it means emakai you need to understand that all right so what you do is you need to calculate uh, your cost of sales mm -hmm. and then you have to then have um average trading stock meaning that you'll add all the amounts for trading stock and divide by two remember whenever they say average it means divide by two all right and then moving on to average stock average, uh, average trading stock right mm -hmm. over cost of sales so that's that's uh, basically what we we were focusing on Okay. It's the same indicator of a time period that the business keeps its inventory before they are uh, before they are to sell it. Mm -hmm. You understand? All right. And then um, also it tells us days. Yeah. It gives us a, a, a number of days. Mm -hmm. And then we go to average debtors over credit sales, right? Yep. So what does this tell us? Remember, when we speak of debtors, mm -hmm. then it means collection. Collection of what? The money that we are owed. Yep. Exactly. So this will then give you an indication of how many days you can actually expect certain returns from your debtors. Yes. All right. So what do you do here? So remember, as I said, average. Yeah. So average, you need to divide by two. So you'll take your amount for a uh, debtors control because remember, debtors control shows us our our debtors, right? How how many people are owing us? And then you add it. You divide it by two. Yeah. After dividing it by two. As we, we, we are shown on our example, they said uh, 90,000, for example, plus 50, mm. right? That's the amount that we are owed. Divide by two. And then you need to then divide that, right? Mm -hmm. By your credit sales. Yes. All right. Then multiply by the number of days. Yeah. Number of days, which is 365. All right. And then the last one, which is average creditors uh, divide by credit purchases, multiply by 365, which is the number of days. That shows us the number of days which we are expected to then settle our uh, credit. Yeah. You understand? The number of days which will, it will take us to cover our creditors' uh, owings, mm -hmm. if I may put it like that. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. They are so uncertain and yeah. very, very nervous about this year. Um, how, well, how would you advise that person? It's simple. Mm. What you have to do is to practice more, especially go accounting, but yeah. not mainly accounting and other subjects. You are supposed to do what? You are supposed to practice, prepare yourself. Yeah. My advice would be use past question papers because yes. the manner in which they ask questions it, it's not different. Absolutely. Mm, so you story. can actually track and get to understand how they actually ask their questions. Mm. And you'll be prepared. You're also watching Ikele Zanati for the very first time. It's Ikele Zanati with all the subjects that we cover on the show. So every Mondays, we give you nothing but the best when it comes to mathematics. On Tuesdays, um, uh, life or rather physical sciences. On, on Wednesdays, English FAL. Uh, life sciences on Thursdays as well as accountings on Friday. So make sure that you are definitely watching Ikele Zanati every Monday to Friday, 5 to 6 a.m. exclusively to SABC1. Mzanti for sure. I'm a goal for this year. Academically, I'm back. I'm Jana. Do you know? I do believe rather that we have a comment coming in right now on the social media streets. And then I get a fear to Ibuya Ochabo. And I get Oti, I want to study a community which I rather want to start a community vegetable garden in my community, Mpangeni. I think this is a need for children who go to school on empty stomachs. Wow, that is such a great idea, Budwami. I hope that you really do uh, justice to this and all the best to you. Um, there's another comment coming in from Olenage Ibuagu Ayanda Mashinini. And I get Oti, hi, hashtag G and Clan. My goal this year is to keep a positive mindset and make sure I always set targets in my academic life. Absolutely. 
definitely be fair to do the right thing. Now, says this good thing, I'm a cold worker for this year. I have a ganja and green gold and says, Oh, I'm not just a put on my side, yeah, dollar. Best this way, dollar. We wrap up the inner, yeah, accounting. Do not prove myself. Oh, welcome back, Mzanti. You are still watching Ikeleza Nati, the primer series right here on SABC1. Mzanti, for sure, accounting is what we are doing. I'm trying to go to my name, Safunu was, but to go to Kasha Kasha Kolds Wako academically. I have back and Johnny for Lonyaga Lower 2020. So, as you say, we're going on Facebook. We are simply Keleza Nati on Twitter, GN underscore SABC1. On the Instagram streets, we're simply Keleza Nati underscore SABC1. Please do the right thing. And, uh, you know, uh, definitely I'll be taking some of your comments throughout the show like I've been doing. Oh, I'm going to I guess we'll end back to your accounting. Nelson, over to you. All right, thank you, Sia. Well, for the remainder of the session, I'd just like to go on a few things which are very important, especially when dealing with financial statements. Yeah. So, Moseka, I always booze with you. Okay, so Nelson, explain me in our financial statements. Mind you, you learning as you see. Well, adjustments are tricky. So, I just want us to just go through them from grade 10 up until matric. Yeah. Well, most of these adjustments still in our grade 10, grade 11, so I answer. But still, you need to pay attentive attention, if that's props. Si <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, first things first, you need to know how to actually prepare the uh, final accounts and detailed financial statements of the following uh, adjustments. Yes. First, trading stock, you understand? Mm. Uh, so trading stock here, when you're dealing with financial statements, mm -hmm. it can be either a deficit or a surplus. Yeah. So let me explain these two concepts. Okay. When it's a deficit, it's a loss. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example, like higher, so that you can understand. So let's say now you bought about 50 loaves of bread. Yeah. And then you sell about 30. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing your um, stock counting or stock taking, mm -hmm. then you notice which you selling a 15. Mm -hmm. Then it means... Right? Yeah. That five that you lost, mm -hmm. then it's going to be a deficit. It's a loss. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. And then your surplus, that's the profit, yeah. in other words. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a profit here, to say as with you, it's when you actually take um, your, let's say, trading stock, mm -hmm. right? And then you check which, okay, so now, on hand, you know, this much. Yeah. But when we started, we had this much. Surplus is, it's more like what's, uh, 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 there after you've actually sold everything and yeah yeah and then also consumable stores on hand and then what's interesting now is that we stretch e depreciation yet so this part becomes more in depth yeah may we understand remember when you're dealing with depreciation you have different methods of calculating a, depre a depreciation and then um the first one which is the straight line method right or cost price method. Mm -hmm. and then the second one is diminishing balance. Yeah. So when you're in grade 12, you need to know how to calculate a depreciation here. Yeah. You know, because we are taught from grade 10. Yes. We are taught these things up until metric. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, you are supposed to use question papers because when they ask you in terms of depreciation, mm -hmm. it might be three. Mm -hmm. What you use two simple examples that you, uh, teachers use in class. Yeah. But when now you're doing them on your own, you need to know them. Yes. All right, so then we move on to bad debts. Yeah. So we know what bad debts are. It's when a debtor fails to pay equal uh, mm -hmm. You understand? More like, so for example, see when you go to Mashonisa and then um ten bisudzum like next month. Mm -hmm. Next thing you can pay. So mm -hmm. you're a bad debt. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. But then it then becomes interesting with grade twelve because this is where we also learn about receipts from insolvent estates yes. so what are those mm -hmm. so remember there are estates right insolvent yeah. estates when you fail to actually pay mm -hmm. they say okay for whatever amount that sia was owing we are going to pay a certain share so usually they would say for example i'll just write it here let's say maybe for four thousand three hundred, right mm -hmm. when they are going to pay um let's say 43 cents yeah so what it means is for you to know when you are preparing your financial statements, for you to know, Guti, how much are you going to get back from the insolvent estates, you need to then say 4,000 
300 multiply by 0 0.43 mm. so 0 0.43 is similar to 43 cents you understand and then when you do that then it will give you how much you're going to get from these insolvent estates so that's something new that they need to know in makaya as they prepare for their final exam yep. all right and then um correction of errors they've been doing it from grade 10. Mm -hmm. you understand we've been focusing on this and then also um another thing that's important is for us to also focus on e e e um, adjustments yeah. on uh, income tax since this is something that that is new yes so income tax right it's charged on Eloni profit yako. So they'll give you a percentage or they'll give you that specific amount of the income tax. You understand? So for income tax, I just want to go to uh, this part here, okay. which is something that is new. Mm. So let's say maybe they give you um, a profit before income tax. Yep. And then they give you, let's say, for example, a profit for the year and then they didn't give you a income tax mm -hmm. so remember income tax is always money going out of the business you understand so it means that since let's say a uh, profit for the year is four mm -hmm. right and then profit before income tax is six mm -hmm. so how much will be your income tax mm -hmm. so it means your income tax then it will be two because you are minusing your income tax from your profit before income tax. Yes. So they can play with it. Mm -hmm. It can be either they give you um, your profit for the year as well as your income tax and then they say calculate your profit before income tax. So it means you'll then add because now you need to find your profit before you minus your income tax. Yeah. Quite interesting. Mm. Yeah. And then another thing that we're supposed to focus on, Lana, uh, is... Our final accounts. Yes. You understand? Our final accounts, it includes trading account. It includes our profit and loss account. Mm -hmm. It includes your appropriation account. So mm -hmm. most of these things is just pinda pinda. I see. You understand? So when you're at home and you are, you know, confused, just relax. Mm -hmm. Give yourself time. Practice using past question papers so that you can see the difference. Remember, grade 10, you were doing financial statements for a sole trade mm -hmm. and then grade 11 you are doing financial statements for partnership so now since you are doing for a company you need to then understand the differences which as as nelson ashilo mm -hmm. there's something new which i need to expect which is your income tax your profit before income tax that's what's new that's what's added to a financial statement circle of which is the income statement mm -hmm. Yeah, so this year it's quite interesting. Women and Jay-Z were ujam ujam ning ning ujam. Yeah. Ning ujam. Ning ujam. Yeah, so that's it for the day. It's, it's, it's just isn't all meluzazi. Keep on practicing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, accounting sometimes, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, Especially yeah. when it comes to isn't those a I mean, I'm going to go to the when doing your income statement and everything like that for you to actually input the correct um you know yeah. amounts well you see to be quite honest uh, i'll just say to you Uti, you are supposed to read a question guys that's the first thing mm. i'll just say you need to read your questions fully yes read the whole question mm. oh but if 15 percent and then you just yeah mm. and also another thing mm. it's simple to pass accounting mm. it's quite simple if you give yourself time mm. because you know, one thing links to another. Mm. Sometimes you just get marks for doing a step. Mm. So knowing your uh, formats, yeah, it's quite important. Mm. Just do that. Practice do formats. That. Yeah, yeah. And put academic goal as because that's what we're all about. Well, you see, when you set goals for yourself, yeah, it puts you on the spot to which you perform. Mm. You understand? Sometimes yeah. it's 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 not about abandoners who are surrounding you but it's about you yes. if you know your goals you set your goals Absolutely. definitely you're gonna conquer mm.
Mm, yeah. Definitely. Thank definitely. you so much, Nelson, for that. Oh, come on, Jim Zanti, let's grab what you guys are saying on the social media streets in Jenga Maj. Now, we go alone, Dim Zimela, you know, Uti Wola, hashtag class of 2020. See ya, Pasa no Makanjani this year. I cannot wait to hit the ground running and get those A's. Absolutely, man. We love a bunch of that. Keep being positive and just keep your positivity throughout the entire year. Do we have another Facebook comment? Yes, no, maybe. Maybe you can also send us um, some of your um, goals for this year but to let us know what's on facebook so kelezanati gn underscore sabc1 on the twitter streets on instagram we're simply kelezanati underscore sabc1 now we are back again on monday with mathematics but so you definitely want to wake up bright and early for that one so you oh mr p in the warehouse and tinaga city have an amazing weekend but otherwise so we're seeing one again on mondays otherwise if you still want to get in touch with me it's pretty simple at imc underscore g and uh nelson what can you say in closing all the best, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. But for some people, we see Onyaga Wakawa 2020 Kala Kona Manje. Thank you so much, Nelson, and thank you so much at home for watching Keleza Nati City. Have a brilliant weekend, and see Nagas on Mona on Monday, same time, same place. Goodbye for now. What's good hey. for you today, man? Look, I got a lot of books, I'm stacking paper. Uh, Trying to be an accountant, stacking paper. Yeah. Geographical mind, I'm smashing craters. Okay, listen, I got my bag, yeah, that's major. Uh, every morning when I wake, it's on. There's a world waiting to be... <laughs>